welcome back guys to another episode. My name is Greg from Oak Sea Adventures. This one's a little bit different to uh, traveling around. I'm actually going to be installing a engine watchdog. And you'll probably wonder, uh, what do you call an engine watchdog? Well, I never heard of one until a few weeks ago and my mate recommended it to me. So basically it is a device that you fit to your engine head and transmission and it'll give you a audible alarm if you start to lose water through your cooling system in your motor. So I'll just show you, I've got to set out here on the table behind me, or say in front of me now actually, so I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So basically what it is, is this device right here. Uh, that is the engine watchdog. It is a device that has two thermocells. This one here goes to the head of the engine. The second one goes to the transmission. This is a dual, dual um, port unit, you can get a single port unit and it just does the head, head temperature alone. It ha comes with bits and pieces of fitting instructions as well, uh, pretty basic. I'm no auto electrician but um, looking at that it's, it's fairly easy to install. So that is my plan today is to fit this. Um, to me it's, it cost me $180 on eBay, I'll, show up, I'll throw up the link so you guys can have a look. Um, but there's also, as I said, there's also a dual port and a single port, so you can have a choice of what you want. The biggest, uh, I reckon the biggest issue with uh, new vehicles is where to actually fit the head unit. So I've got a BT50, um, but I also already run a fair bit of a radio there and you get the fuse box here, but you see you can't really mount it. Where I'd like to fit it would be probably right here. In this space here so plan is to uh, have a look behind that whether I can drill a hole in the back of that and get that fitted up all right bit of a rough hole in there but I managed to be able to see behind it um, once you put that piece and that panel in there you won't see it anyway so but yeah new cars aren't the easiest to work on I'll give you that okay so that's in that's uh, hold it done. Now all I've got to do now is separate all these wires and push them through there and then run them into the engine bay and the others into the fuse box. Yeah, so what I've done, I've cut the, the cigarette lighter plug off the end of the, off the uh, power, power lead to get it through that hole in the back of the dash. Um, I'm not going to use that cigarette lighter plug, I'm going to put a adder fuse on the end of that and that'll help, um, that'll, well basically it protects the, the unit as well. So that's the last one to go through the hole, then I'll put some double side tape on that head unit and stick it to the dash and hopefully it stays there. Double side tape didn't work so I ended up having to very very slowly drill little pilot holes just using a drill bit and then self tapped it in. So that's here there now, it's in there, in the little compartment. Now it's time to run these wires up through the firewall and then the one on the other side I'll just go around the other side so you can see it but um, okay I've cut that off as you can see you can see I've cut it off so I'm going to now just get that in the fuse box here back of that and then uh, plumb that up and then I'll show you how to bolt it to the head once I get it through the firewall all right okay so I've pulled the wires through the firewall I'll just turn the camera around so you can see it so basically, I pulled it down through there on the left-hand side, um, on the fuse box, and then basically running it across to this side of the engine, and then I bolt it in between the, I always loosen this off, in between the oil stick holder and the head. So, i just pull that bolt out. Yeah, I didn't feel me pushing the wire through the, the uh, engine bay or a firewall because all you would have heard was cursing and swearing it wasn't the easiest easiest to do so i've bolted it in here behind the uh the head and the dipstick holder okay i'm doing oh, well, now the reason why i bolted it here because my mate did the same exactly the same place and he's got the ranger same motor it's in the bt and his works a treat so i'm not going to go look for anything else i could have could put a bolt here i suppose there's one that i could do there or there but it's out of the way protected. All I've got to do now is just get this cable, sort this cable out. Okay I'll just basically tidy all that up. Cable tidy nice and neat. 
that's all out of the way and uh, that's that done um, next job to do is where's it gone uh, this one here now this is the other one which is a transmission one so go and find out where this one's got to go so I've gone and this the car um, not a lot of places to actually fit this this second sensor to the transmission and I'm not sure where to put it so what I've done I've actually taken one of the bolts out of the oil pan and fitted it straight to the uh, underside of the transmission on the oil pan itself it should work it's going to be the hottest part of the end of the uh, transmission the oil so should work okay um, if not I'll have to shift it around but I'll climb into the car now and I'll show you guys where I fitted it it's not the easiest but okay I fitted it you can see the red there fitted it up, into, up in here um, to, the, to the oil pan itself so I am hoping that that will work okay so like I said I'll just tidy those wires up and I'll uh, start her up I'll say the engine temp will work pretty well straight away the transmission I'm gonna have to go for a drive and, and set it and test it and then you can adjust it as well you can actually set a high high alarm on it um, but it's, for the next week or so I will start to play around with the uh, just the average temperatures that the motor's getting and the transmission and then from that I'll adjust it to for high temp maybe five or ten degrees hotter than normal what it drives around town uh, I do tow so it might not be enough I might have to raise it a little bit more but like I said it's, um, my mate's got it on his car and he, he swears by it so I'll test it out and uh, see how it goes so at the moment I'm just going to tidy it all up and then we'll start the car and go inside and check it out okay so back again so tidied it up got the cable running through here cable tied on goes up here basically tucked it all into the uh, bit more this bigger of sized uh, protector um, so now what we do now we'll start the car up and see if the engine temp goes up and we'll start with that first so it should go up so we'll have a look at it first see what it is at the moment sitting on 25 degree engine temp so start her up and just keep an eye on it so it does okay so it's been idling for about I don't know, a couple of minutes now it's gone up to 31 degrees engine temp transmission's gone up to 19 um, what I'll do is I'll put the tools away I'll leave the car running and then um, go for a drive around the block um, let's go for a quick drive and see how it goes so yep 41 degrees still climbing which is good I have, I've always in the back of my mind been concerned about blowing a radiator hose while I'm traveling this one is on and um, and I've heard a nasty very very nasty stories of the fact that when it blows all the water out it doesn't show any indication on the temperature dial that you've actually lost water um, it actually gets colder so because there's no water actually going past the, the heat probe that's set up throughout the engine bay or in the cooling system itself so yeah my mate swears by this I said engine watchdog I will throw the link up at the end of this uh, in this uh, installment so 43 degrees okay so just driven uh, about a couple of k's in the suburb here where I live so it's at the moment transmission temperature is 27 degrees and the engine temp is sitting around 53 looking at the gauge on the car it's just past quarter so it's fairly accurate um, happy with that not sure on the on the transmission temp whether it's in the right spot that's all said i've got a bolter to the um, transmission pan uh, just one of the bolts that holds the pan on so i'll just have to keep an eye on that see whether it's in the right spot but i've got plenty of um, excess cable that i can move around if i need to okay so i've just driven around the block a few times i've got the engine up to its normal operating temperature on the on the uh, digital gauge um, I'll just show you guys that so as you can see there that that's where she sits 
just not quite halfway and the engine temp is still climbing but it's saying 76 degrees transmission temp is 38 degrees so it's gone 77 um, my mate expected oh, my mate Clint said to me um, you should be expecting around about 93 degrees on head temp now remember guys this is not reading the water in the engine this is reading the actual temperature of the head so uh, I'm going to have a play of it to get it set up right uh, he swears me that uh, it'll sit around between 93 and 97 degrees on normal days uh, towing you'll get up to around 100 uh, and, and he sets his for about 105 to 110 depending on the conditions at the time and um, he said that he has had it scream off at him 105 degrees when he had it set 105 towing a boat up a big hill the engine temp got hot uh, and his exhaust temp was around 550 degrees as well so he was pushing it so it does work um, early days yet uh, I'll give you some more feedback on this um, I've got a little trip coming up with the van on the back in a couple of weeks um, that'll be our dwelling up caravan park and do a review on that as well so that'll be a good test for it um, anyway guys uh, I'll, I'll leave it here now I'll call it a, call it a wrap but um, uh, yeah all I can do is test it out so like I said uh, I'll throw the link up check the link out it is eBay and uh, it wasn't expensive I said 140 or one uh, for the single probe and the dual probe was uh, about $180 so anyway guys um, I'll catch you later on.